Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mick. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on custom collection view layouts. In this video, you're going to replace the coloured cells with cells containing photos. And you'll use auto layout to arrange those photos in such a way that as the cell transitions from being a standard cell to a featured cell, the photo doesn't scale, but instead more of the photo is revealed and the photo will remain vertically centered. You'll also add an overlay to the cell, which changes its opacity based on the transition between the standard cell and the featured cell, which results in the colors in the featured cell being far more vibrant than those in the standard cells. Here's what the app will look like when you finish this video. All the cells now contain photos, and the colour in those photos is far more vibrant in the featured cell than it is in the standard cells, thanks to the overlay that changes its opacity based on the user scrolling. And this really helps draw attention to the featured cell. To achieve this effect, we create an image view whose height is equal to the featured cell height. And then we position this within our cell and use auto layout to make sure that it remains vertically centered. The cell will initially be sized as a standard cell height, but then as it transitions from being a standard cell to being a featured cell, that height will change, but the image view will remain vertically centered, therefore revealing more of the photo. In order to achieve the overlay changing its alpha value as the cell transitions between the two states, we'll once again take advantage of apply layer attributes in our UI collection view cell subclass. This time, instead of actually manipulating any layout attributes, as the height of the cell changes, we'll simply use this as an opportunity to calculate the percentage that the cell has grown or shrunk based on the height of its current frame and the height of the standard cell height and the featured cell height. And then we'll use this as the value of the alpha property on our overlay view. We'll also cap the alpha between predetermined minimum and maximum values so that the overlay doesn't become too dark or too light. So here's a sample as at the end of the previous video and you'll remember that we've got our featured cell here and then as the user scrolls the next cell grows to become the featured cell. And what we'd like to do in this video is replace these colors with an image and the cells down here the non-featured cells should just show a small portion of that image and then as the user scrolls, more of that image will come into view as that cell grows. But it should, but the image isn't scaled, it should still say the same size as it is down here. And also we want to apply an overlay, so the images down here will look darker and then as they scroll and come into view as they grow, the opacity of the overlay should change by the same percentage as the scroll so that the featured image is much more brighter and vibrant. So the first thing that we want to do is obviously stop this running and jump back to Xcode. And if we open up main.storyboard, and before we do anything else, let's just resize the cell to 200 by 200, just so we can see what we're working with. And then let's open up the Attributes Inspector. And then change to the Identity Inspector. And there's already a subclass in this project, inspiration cell, and we just want to change the class of the cell in the storyboard to that inspiration cell. Then we need to find an image view and drag that onto the cell. And then in the attributes inspector, change the mode to aspect fill. And then we want to add some constraints here. So what we need to do is uncheck constraint to margins, set the lead in and the trailing to zero, and set the height to 280, which is, if you remember, the height of our featured cell. And then change update frames to items of new constraints and add those three constraints. And then using the align menu, check vertical centering container, update frames, items of new constraints, and add one constraint. And that'll give us all our constraints for that image view. Then if we right click on inspiration cell, you'll see there's already an outlet for the image view. So we can just connect that up to 
the imagery we've just created. Save that. And then we just need to update our controller. So I'll just close the inspector. And if we come now to self item index path, let's remove where we set the color and let's change this cast to cast it as an inspiration cell. And then we can simply set the inspiration on the cell from our inspirations array using the index path dot item. And the final step before we can build and run that is let's just get rid of our colors array constant up there. Now if we build and run, you'll see that each of our cells now has a photo and as we scroll, more of that photo comes into view, but the photo itself stays positioned where we'd expect in the center of the cell. So the next step is to add that overlay that I was talking about. So if we stop the sample running, jump back to Xcode and open the storyboard once again. And this time we want to add a basic UI view on top of the image view. And then we want to use a pin menu to constrain this to all four sides, but again, uncheck constraint to margins, and then we'll set these to zero all the way around. Update frames to items of new constraints, and again, add four constraints. Then in the attributes inspector, change the background color to the black color. And finally, right click again on inspiration cell and connect the image cover view outlet to the view that we've just created. Finally, if we open up inspiration cell.swift, just close the inspector to give us some more room. And now what we need to do is implement apply layout attributes, starting with our call to super and pass in the same layout attributes. Let's just move this down and see what I'm typing. And then we need to get a reference to the featured height and standard height using those constants that are declared in the layout. So just to save us typing everything again, we'll just get a reference to them the one time. So featured height and let standard height equal visual layout constant cell dot standard height. And then we need to work out the delta, which is the percentage that the height has changed in that given scroll. So let delta equals one minus featured height minus the CG rect get height of our frame, which is the frame of the cell. And we'll divide that by the featured height minus the standard height. And that will give us the sort of percentage between one and zero change. And then we want to restrict the alpha change or the opacity change for that overlay between a minimum and a maximum. So let min alpha equals 0 0.3. Oh, and we need to cast this as a CG float. And then let the max alpha, and again, that's a CG float, equal 0.75. And then we simply set the alpha on the image cover view outlet to be the max alpha minus the delta times the max alpha minus the min alpha. And that'll give us a nice gradual change from the minimum to the maximum as the user scrolls. So if we build and run again, you'll see now the images down here are much darker, but the featured image is much more vibrant. And then as we scroll, you can see the opacity changes in relation to the scroll. And again, as we scroll, which gives that really nice effect. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave off with a challenge. The cells really do look good now they're displaying the photos. But since this layout is being used to display information about the Inspirations Talks track from the recent RW DevCon conference, there are several key pieces of information missing from each cell. So your challenge this time is to first add the session title to the cell and have it scale up as the cell transitions between the two states. Then add the room, speaker and time details and just like the overlay, they should fade in and out of view as the cell transitions between the two states. 
As always, you'll find all the details in the challenge document, but do make sure to give it a go yourself first before reaching for the solution. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.